Yeah. Uh, Mr. Malik is exactly right. I've travelled from Spain to Manchester and then from Manchester straight to be with you here this evening. And I do appreciate you giving me your time and staying to listen uh, to what I have to say. And let me say, before I get into the detail of the speech that I want to make tonight, uh, the 5th of January will always be remembered, in my opinion at least, uh, as the day when democracy died in Bangladesh. Yeah. That is the truth. I'm very proud and very honoured to be able to speak to you tonight and I'd like to congratulate the citizen movement uh, for the great work that, that you've been doing in terms of democracy and human rights in Bangladesh. And I'd especially like to thank my good friend, uh, Mr Malik, who has done so much to raise the issue of Bangladesh uh, in the UK Parliament, so thank you very much uh, for that. An election should be a proud day for any de democratic uh, country. Uh, it's a day where people are truly free to make up their own minds and their decisions about the future of their country. A day where the government can be held to account uh, by the people. Here in the UK, in the United Kingdom, we are looking forward to the election on the 7th of May. The general election will take place on the 7th of May. The political parties will run their campaigns and make their arguments. People will have a choice about the kind of country that they want to see here in the United Kingdom, the kind of government that they want to take this country forward. Obviously, I hope that it will be a Labour uh, government that wins uh, on that election day. But ultimately, it's for the people to decide. It's for them to say what kind of government they want. But the fifth of January 2014 was not a proud day for Bangladesh. It was a very sad day for Bangladesh. Elections are about freedom and choice. But where is the freedom when polling stations are attacked by the authorities? Where is the choice when the main opposition were forced to boycott the elections? If the people are not given a meaningful choice in an election, then that election is simply not democratic. Yeah. No freedom, no choice, no democracy. Yeah. That is the sad state of Bangladesh today, and I'm very sorry that I have to say it. So here we are, exactly one year later, remembering the election for all the wrong reasons. On election day, 12 months ago, 21 deaths were reported and 47 constituencies were forced to shut down their voting stations due to violence. Voting booths being set on fire and mob intimidation across the country. Widespread panic resulted in low electoral turnout when people realised that exercising their right to vote could lead to injury or even death. Roadblocks and disruption all but slowed the country to a halt. There were real concerns that the effect it would have on Bangladesh's economy. From halfway across the world in the United Kingdom, we looked on in horror. It was clear to people across the world that the result of an election conducted in this way in Bangladesh simply was not legitimate. The USA and the European Union condemned the violence and called for fresh elections to be held. Yeah. This was a call that I strongly supported and I still strongly support it today. Yeah. What progress has been made in that 12 months? Yes, we've had local elections in Bangladesh that have been conducted fairly and where the Bangladesh National Party have played a part and this should be welcomed. But Sheikh Hasina continues as Prime Minister ruling the country with no serious opposition and no accountability. Yes. This situation cannot be allowed to continue for much longer. We need to see real action, not more empty words. Yes. So when we look to the future of Bangladesh, fresh elections conducted in an open and democratic way need to be the first priority. Yes. It is only with fresh elections that government will have the authority and legitimacy to make the changes that Bangladesh so badly needs. And for this to happen, 
we need the international community to step up and play a much more important and bigger role. I know some people say that Bangladesh needs to move to a point where there is no longer the need for a caretaker government or indeed for international involvement. And I would love to see this happen at some point in the future. But in the current situation in Bangladesh, and given what has happened over the last 12 months, it is quite clear to me that we have not yet reached that point. We need a caretaker government in place while new elections are conducted. We also need proper, independent, international election observers. We need all parties to be allowed to contest the election. And we need an end to intimidation and violence. But democracy is not just about elections. Democracy is about a culture of free expression and debate in one's country. For people to be able to cast their vote and decide which party to support, there needs to be a fair hearing for different ideas and different arguments. That means that politicians from all parties must be allowed the right to campaign for what they believe in. It is clear that this simply is not happening in Bangladesh today. Just today, we hear that the BNP leader, Khaled Azir, who I've met on a number of occasions, has been put under, effectively, house arrest and is not even allowed to visit her friends. Simply unacceptable in what is supposed to be a democratic country. To make matters worse, the police in Dhaka are becoming increasingly political and totalitarian. Thousands of ordinary people in Bangladesh have planned to take to the streets to peacefully protest about the elections and the lack of democracy. Yeah. This kind of peaceful protest is a natural part of political life in free countries. Yeah. Here in the UK, we have seen protests about government cuts or indeed about student tuition fees. We take that protest for granted. But the response of the police in Dhaka has been to start arresting political activists and opposition figures. They have cre created a climate of fear where people are scared to leave their homes. Yeah, yeah. They have cut off the city from public transport so that people cannot travel. These drastic measures are hugely damaging to the economy of Bangladesh and send a signal around the world that, is, that it is not an open and democratic country. Sadly, this is not an isolated event, but it is part of a wider pattern of police intimidation and restrictions on people's rights. We know that BNP figures were arrested last year during the elections and only released after the results of those elections had been announced. The situation got worse in the aftermath of those elections. Faced with criticism by the way that the government dealt with protests, government forces responded by cracking down on any opposition. Journalists and bloggers who oppose the regime have been arrested and charged with sedition or unlawful publication. Some have not been charged at all and have been left to simply rot in prisons. I have met one Bangladeshi journalist who currently lives in the UK because he's afraid for his life. He misses his wife and children, and he's afraid for their lives. And all because he was reporting on the horrors in his country. There have been serious allegations about government interference with the war crimes tribunal in Bangladesh. And that has undermined the legal system. Human Rights Watch, a reputable, well-regarded international agency, have also reported that the government there have been involved in violent suppression of peaceful protests, killing hundreds of innocent people and injuring many thousands more. Now, I understand that many of the protests have been violent and the government does indeed need to keep order, but there is no excuse for many of the violations that are taking place. Of course, it's not just government that's to blame. Amnesty International have reported that Islamist groups are behind attacks on minority Hindus in Bangladesh. Homes and temples have been destroyed and entire villages have been looted. So not only has the government in Bangladesh failed to set an example on human rights violations, 
It's also failed to protect vulnerable minorities from attack. Politicians in the UK and other countries need to be very clear in condemning these abuses and standing up for the ordinary people of Bangladesh who are suffering so desperately under the current regime in that country. We need to send a strong message that these violations must stop and that there must be justice for the victims. Until this issue is addressed, it's hard to see how any progress can be made. A recent report from Amnesty International raised real concerns about torture, enforced disappearances and abductions. They made recommendations to the government in Bangladesh, but they have been ignored. It is clear that human rights situation in Bangladesh is getting worse. Without democracy, there can be no human rights as the government is not accountable and can get away with the human rights violations. And without human rights, there is no democracy as free speech is shut down and people connect, cannot exercise their democratic rights. So we need action now on both these issues to put Bangladesh back on the road to progress. It's clear that the government in Bangladesh will not listen to pressure from its own citizens. So what we need, and this is addressing the question that you raised to me, is much better, a much better response from other countries around the world. And yes, of course, that must and should include the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom and Bangladesh have ties going back hundreds of years. We are united as members of the Commonwealth and increasingly united by the family ties of our citizens. There are many places in this country, such as my own constituency of Rochdale, and where we are now in the East End of London, that owe much to the strong relationship between our two countries. It is because of this that I am disappointed that the United Kingdom has not played a more engaging role in the recent events in Bangladesh. Last year I was disappointed to see David Cameron, the Prime Minister, hosting Sheikh Hasina in Downing Street. It sent the wrong signal about our relationship with the government of Bangladesh. I have raised the issue of Bangladesh in Parliament many times, but I still do not get the sense that the UK government regards it as a priority. I think this is the wrong approach. The UK should be a strong voice for human rights and democracy across the world. And I would like to see us making every effort to help Bangladesh achieve its potential as a free and democratic country. We are months away from the United Kingdom's general election. Now is the time to put pressure on all the main political parties in the United Kingdom, Labour, Liberal, Conservative, whoever else. Put the pressure on them. Get them to commit in their manifestos to supporting the Bangladeshi people, not supporting, <laughs> not supporting the current regime in Bangladesh, but supporting the 136, 40 million people, Bangladeshis, that live in that country. That's who they should be supporting. We need a relentless focus on the real issues that are affecting the people of Bangladesh, such as economic growth, the environment and working conditions. An active and engaged UK government, working with dedicated and determined Bangladeshis on the ground, can help the country move on and grow towards a prosperous future. Let me finish by saying, the people of Bangladesh deserve better than this constant cycle of political instability and violence. They deserve the freedoms and rights that are taken for granted here in the United Kingdom, as well as a fair chance at success for themselves and their families. There is a lot of work to do before this future can be achieved. But if there are enough people dedicated to making it happen, then I know a huge amount can be done. I look forward to make, working more with you to get Bangladesh back on the road to democracy. Thank you again. Thank you.